<laughs> SanDisk. We're talking about SanDisk. The UHS-2 card. You should know this stuff if you have one. If you don't, why well, you shouldn't be buying one. Welcome back to another video. My name is Nikos. Today we're talking about the SanDisk once again. The UHS-2 card. This is a super fast card, 300 megabytes per second on the read, 260 on the right. And when you use this card in a camera, like I did when I first made my first video, which I'll link below, I was super happy on this. My workflow just went, you know, from zero to hero because you're transferring so fast to your computer and then your camera's doing what it's supposed to be doing because you should have had at least a V60 card on that Canon R. But when you bought the camera, somebody sold you on a V30 card and you never checked to make sure that you had the right card because you trusted. And I've talked about that trust. Now, the idea here is very simple. Uh, this card, there is more to it. And there's a lot of data that I'm gonna be doing and I'm gonna be comparing it to this ProGrade right here. Now, this ProGrade is the choice that I'm going for right now due to price point. Uh, I haven't tested all the cards, but I'm gonna be making a second video on this. So do hit subscribe if you want to see this at the bell too, so you can see this kind of information so you know what you're buying. Now, is this a bad card? No, it is a good card for models, the consumer models, and not the higher end models of any camera maker. Now, when you're looking at buying one of these, the only reason I'm making this video is because I started testing more and more with the Canon R5 and the R6. And those ones require more muscle, card-wide muscle. And Sandus just can't deliver. It can't, where this one, ProGrade, is delivering. It is awesome. And they do it nicely with this awesome packaging compared to this like, you know, hard to open and deal with, you know, if you wanna make a video and review. So, what am I getting at? Issues, let's talk about issues. The idea here is very simple. When you're taking pictures with this camera, you have an issue with the transfer rates. And with RAW, it is okay. With JPEGs though, there is an issue. So in the previous video, I did talk about how video transfers were great. However, we saw the slowdown on images. I found out as I was doing more testing, that is, it is JPEGs that's the issue. It takes a long time for the JPEGs to transfer. At the same time, with that issue, well, another issue will present itself. When you're using a higher end camera, what you're gonna see is that buffer, it will fill up nicely. Okay, so you're gonna see this buffer fill up and it will be similar to the other previous cards. And what will happen there is that once it fills up, it takes bloody long for the buffer to empty. That's transferring everything off that buffer to the card. And when you're comparing something to ProGrade, it's night and day. In some cases, over 20 seconds, and you're sitting there scratching your head. Now, on the Canon R, you're not taking as many pictures all at once. But when you're using something like a Canon R5 or an R6, you're, you're snapping photos at such an incredible rate that it's filling up so fast, and then there's so many more pictures that it's got to empty. And it just takes so long. So if you're in a situation where you're not in like a studio taking one picture and going, hey, great card, you're sitting at a wedding and you're taking pictures, well, what's going to happen? You're going to press that button down, it's gonna fill up, and then you're gonna be like, I can't take any more pictures until it empties, or half empties, and then I could take another so many. Now, some people will say, well, I don't take pictures like that. You may not, but sometimes you might be in a situation, there might be people in a situation, and you might need to have the buffer ready. And this is where you look at it and you go, okay, I wanna snap like 10 pictures. Uh, that's great, you can do that, and it'll be fine. But once you get over that mark, or you're just trying to get certain things now you're in a situation. And the question just becomes, for the price point, why on earth would you be spending the money when you can get something better for a better price point? That's it. This is the bottom line. This is just like sitting there looking at it and saying to yourself, well, what's the reality here? So let me show you some examples of what I'm gonna be showing you in the next video of doing the comparison between two of these cards. Now here's an example of SanDisk, 300 megabytes per second recovery in the R6. You're getting about 23 seconds on the C-RAW. On the RAW, you're getting around 24 seconds, and then of course 27 with the RAW and JPEG. So this is significant. This is significant. 
it's literally like waiting there for eternity when you're waiting for this buffer to empty. That's it. It's, it's, it's eternity right there. Now, if we compare the 175 megabytes per second UHS-1 card, <laughs> We're looking at 22 seconds, 20 seconds, and 26.33 seconds. So what are we doing here? Well, why are we buying this faster card? What is the goal here other than the video? Getting a V90 speed, that's it. So this, this card right here is just telling us the issue at hand. And I, I, I can't stress this enough. I'm sitting here going, well, what is the goal overall? What is the goal of getting one of these fast cards? Well, to have a card that is doing the best that you need it to do. Quite frankly, it's not. And I'm sitting here and I'm just kind of like mind blown that so many people buy this card and they're okay with it. But then again, I sit back and I say to myself, how many people are going with the R, the R6, the R5, and they're combining them and seeing this difference? Because if I hadn't bought the R6 or the R5, then I wouldn't have been making this a big issue. I would have been like, yo, this card works great. On my R, it is fabulous. But like the idea here is it's, it's, it's not fabulous because I'm gonna keep this card for a while yet. And if I'm gonna be upgrading two more cards down the road, I was gonna buy more of these Sandus. And guess what? I would have screwed myself when I got the R6 if I hadn't bought it. I don't want you guys to be in the same situation. So this is why I'm making these videos. This is why I'm trying to be as open as possible of what I'm finding out. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them below. I want to make and address something here really clear. I'm not doing the testing as in a review where it's in like a clinical trial kind of stage in a lab. I'm doing real world what I'm using the camera for. And I'm seeing all these reviewers who are like, we tested the card with all these tools. That's great. I'm going to test it with some of those, but th it's not the real picture. It's not you going out there. It's not you understanding the limitations you're going to have when you go use the card. And this is what drives me insane when people leave comments and they're like, hey man, like, why don't you do a test like this? This is what the big reviewers do. I, I don't care what the big reviewers do. I care about you guys making good decisions on the products you're buying based on the limitations, based on the price point, so you can succeed in whatever you're trying to do mainly I'm hoping everybody does well in their business. And this is where I sit back and I look at this whole big picture and I, and I ask myself, you know, how can I best address different scenarios with workflow? And this for workflow is killer. It's killer. Because I'm gonna show you more stats as we get into the next video that again, subscribe and I'll leave the link below when it does happen. And the idea here is that the, the stats will show you how bad it is to have one of these cards and then decide, hey, I'm gonna upgrade with one of these other, you know, pro-grade cards and go with this because the limitations is gonna be a bottleneck anyways. So say you did buy a SanDisk and you buy this, it's gonna be a limitation. So taking a few steps back so I can breathe a little bit here and be not in a rant scenario because I'm not gonna get into a rant, but they deserve it. The idea here is that Take a step back, look at your gear, look at your limitations, look at everything. And when people talk online, ask yourself, what are they actually talking about? One. Two, how can I research it to make sure that I am buying the right product? Three, can I buy it from somewhere where I can return it, like I'm doing? And then four, how do I test it to make sure it's good for my workflow when I do get it so that I have time to return it in those 30 days? Because usually it's 30 days. Because like, if you don't, then you're going to be stuck with cards that don't make sense for you. And um, then you're gonna regret it because you're gonna buy something like an R6 or R5 down the road and you're gonna be like, what? Or like one of my uh, newfound friends that has an R5 and they're like, oh my God, like night and day right now, upgrading to a pro grade. And they were using the Sandus and they thought that it was the camera's fault. They literally thought that was a, the, the camera's fault. And they never thought to think about this. And it's just like, it's heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking. but. It's not the camera's fault, it's the disc's fault. You're only as good as your tools. So think about it. Leave a question, comment below. What is your experience? And of course, uh, check out these two videos.